their responsibility now for holding up the budget. It was eminently clear today. I don't think a better case could have been made than it was made by Senator Maldonado. And um, I'm just sorry that what the governor offered and was prepared to do wasn't sufficient. At one point it would have been, but it seems like every time we take a step forward, they ask us to take two steps back. And uh, I don't frankly understand why th there wasn't a budget vote tonight, why there was not 27 votes at least for this budget. And uh, so until they can come around and say that they're ready, we've done all that we can. I was hopeful. Um, you know, I've been, been around a little too long to think anything is sure until it's done. But it had appeared that most of the things that, that we had talked about were either resolved or are we're close enough that, you know, as they say, for government work. The thing that pains me more than anything, really, is that uh, we've had a pretty good relationship with our Republican colleagues, and I think I've been, as the Democratic leader, been very straightforward with them, very generous with the opportunities to share in the operation of the House. They chair two committees. They don't have to. Um, so we've done quite a lot to work cooperatively. And I believe that their unwillingness to accept that uh, Dick Ackerman and I could sit down and resolve these things uh, really is, is a back of the hand to the relationship that we've had. And it's unfortunate. I always felt, felt that one of the things that separated the Senate from other institutions and bodies was that there was a sense of collegiality, cooperation, and, uh, and trust. And there certainly was no exhibition of that tonight, and that's really... It saddens me. I think it's unnecessary. When, when Dick and I talked, it always appeared that Dick and I were able to come to some kind of an accord. And then the next time we got together, it had all come undone. And uh, I understand that the, the, the Republican caucus was bound by the rule of eight, that eight of their members had to agree before any members could vote for it. And if that's the case, you really don't have anybody in charge. Uh, the lowest common denominator, the person with the least to lose, the most to gain, calls the shots. I don't know if that's true or not, but it certainly would explain a lot if it were. Uh, what I tried to get everybody to appreciate is that Fabian Nunez, Mike Valines, Don Parada, Dick Ackerman were all selected by our caucuses to represent the caucus, respective caucuses in the four corner negotiations. We weren't picked by the governor. We weren't picked by divine intervention. We were picked by our peers. So that you would think that when people work out an agreement, somebody else can't come along and say, well, I didn't, I didn't agree to that. And that's effectively what had happened. Did, did you, I mean, did, did, did Mr. Ackerman come to you, or, or did you talk to him and you say, put the budget up and we've got 27 votes? No. No. He didn't get to that point? No. Never has. Uh, it was always, we can't be, you know, we're not ready yet unless we have, and Frankly, I, it, it became so I couldn't remember. I mean, tonight at one point it was that we still have a number of issues yet to resolve in the trailer bills. For the life of me, I, I thought we were down to a couple of issues. And, uh, and I made it very clear last night to the governor that uh, we were not going to go beyond where we are. We were not going to reopen the budget. We were not going to reopen trailer bills, which is effectively part of the budget. If there was any changes to be made, they'd have to be made on common agreement that we will work on these things, and that would include the governor. The governor has veto power, for crying out loud. And he made some very, I thought the governor came a long way in his willingness to work with that caucus to get where we said we had to, you know, we had to go, uh, that we wouldn't go there. So the governor's, I mean, you have to, the governor can speak for himself. So you just went down to the governor's office. Will you be here He'll be talking to himself. What Are you done negotiating? You said that a couple of weeks ago. No, there is no negotiation. There is. I've been. You know what I've done? I've been sitting down and listening and trying to figure out how to solve the problem. I'm a good Catholic boy. You know, I'm always trying to solve everybody's problem. Uh, I can't do that. This is a Republican problem. It's going to have to be solved by Republicans. The state budget is being held up by Republicans. They are captive of people who do not believe unless they have it their way, they're ever going to go our way. So I'm done, and, um, and I'm done. Frankly, I'm done listening. You know, I'm not. You know, we have. If you would have ever told me that uh, I would be sitting here discussing a budget that the governor said he would take down to zero with his vetoes, I'd be shocked. But we've done a lot. We've made a lot of compromises. I said before, this will never make my highlight reel. I didn't call my kids and say, "I got a great budget. You're going to be proud your father voted for." 
This was a bipartisan compromise, the best we could do under very dire fiscal circumstances. And, um, and I resent the, I don't resent it, I can't resent it. It's, it's absurd to me to have Senator McClintock stand up and talk about the future generations when they won't vote for kids who are in foster care, that they want to take money away from children whose parents are on CalWORKs, that we are not going to provide for people who are in their homes trying to live a dignified life and pay the attendants $12 an hour. I mean, talking about whose future are we talking about? Whose kids are we talking about? And there was things in this budget, Senator Maldonado brought one of the Williamson Act. We said, from day one, they said, you can't, we can't vote for that. We have to protect those who are, protect whatever they're doing with their Williamson Act money. I said, okay, that's fair. And we did a couple of other things we said we would agree to. That I certainly, you know, I've never said out loud. So I'm done. I don't know what else we could do. I'm frustrated. Um, I was angry. I'm not angry anymore. I already used my angry words. Uh, was that last week or this earlier this week, whenever it was? So we're going to go. I've told my members, uh, go back to your districts, uh, do some productive work, maybe explain to people, because you're going to get lots of phone calls about why hospitals are not getting paid, why community colleges aren't being paid, why uh, people who are taking care of their children in daycare are not going to be uh, paid for. And we're not going to go and say, give Senator Ackerman's office a call. We're going to tell them the truth. You know, it's a bipartisan budget. It doesn't have bipartisan support. Until Republicans are willing to put up a vote, we're not going to have a budget. So you're looking to the governor to get that 27th vote? Is it his responsibility? I, I can't get it. Senator, why turn down the emergency appropriation then if you're worried about those things that the Republican caucus is trying to do? Because we do not have we do not have continuing resolution. We're not like Congress, where you can dither around and just roll over the budget and never take any responsibility. We have to have a balanced budget. Ask any Republican out there. So for them to just come up with this idea that somehow we can have pick and choose what we're going to fund is disingenuous. Which is a large word for saying it's a dishonest way to conduct business. Can you say what the governor said when, when you and Ackerman met? Was the last time? He just said what he always said. He was really disappointed that, uh, you know, the, these issues could not be resolved. Uh, I said I was, too. And, um, but, you know, I, at that point, I, I kind of like I felt like I was in somebody's bedroom and I ought to leave. I mean, I, you know, I had no, I have no, re I shouldn't have been there, so I left. Senator, are you aware that we are facing a social crisis in the state, whether it's your political future is in dreams with this? I know you are doing the best that you can, but I'm aware of it. Yeah, I'm aware of it. Uh, the California Constitution requires, in its wisdom, that two-thirds vote must be cast to pass and approve a budget. Republicans have two votes in this process. They're holding up the entire state budget. Now there's only one. Senator Maldonado, I think, uh, showed great courage, great statesmanship, and probably some risk. Uh, in what uh, in what he said today, and he cast an I vote, and he went right down the line. Everything, no new taxes, no new programs. He protected the Williamson Act, huge reserve, cut the deficit. He even said what the governor told him that he'd get down to zero. So, you know, this is not you know this isn't even about blaming. The fact of the matter is, it requires 27. We have 25 Democrats, 25 went up, one Republican went up. We are now waiting for them. We will wait when they're ready. We'll be back here post haste. Last, last question. I don't know. I don't know. Is it likely no. you can go to August 20th? Wait for the Senate? I think it's very likely. Yeah. Republicans all along said that they felt that the assembly had to come back and they may get their wish, even if it's inadvertently. Yeah, Thank you.